have and how we intend to solve it. So that's basically just um, the summary of what we have on this page. So it explains Kuban Jenkins on Kubernetes and um, documentation we're going to be working on. So my thought is that as time goes on, as we have discussions, we could keep um, updating the page with more content like um, details of um, topics we intend to cover on the page and all that. Excellent, and that, that looks great to me and it sounds great. You did a really good job on the creating the new layout. Congratulations, you've reverse engineered how to do a layout <laughs> and, and you expressed it in Hamel very well. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, well done. Thank you. So, um, and I opened a, another pull request just um, before this meeting started um, to add a GSOT project page to sub project session as we discussed in the last meeting. I'm still checking it up, although I think there's an issue with the check or something. Very good. That that's excellent. So, next step as well. Thank you. Let me capture the, the the link to that into our notes so that we've got it. New pull request submitted for further structure. Excellent. And I should be able to review that pull request later today. I assume we're getting towards the end of your day, Zinab. So, yes. So I should be able to review it. Um, Oleg, no, he's he's traveling right now. Uh, Mark okay. is sick. And Kristen, I suspect you're busy all day today. So, but probably by the time you're in the office tomorrow or by the time you're awake up tomorrow morning, um, you should have some review comments on it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. Now, Zina, uh, in terms of our working styles, are you okay if I push proposed changes to it myself, or would you rather? That's a little bit less learning for you, but a little bit faster to get the content out. Or I could just suggest, hey, I think you should change this, and then you do it. Do you have a preference which way you would like? I think I would like the suggestions. Okay, I will do suggestions then. Very good, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just so I can have a better understanding of what's changing and so I don't make the same mistakes. Yeah, and, and I think that's great. The I like the GitHub suggestions feature. It, it lets me offer very specific, oh, I think this should become that. And then you can write from GitHub accept that suggestion and commit it right there. Yes. Okay, great. Anything else on the pull request? Um, no, nothing else. Okay, next topic was the blog post to introduce Google Season of Docs. I had created confusion the last time we met um, by describing much something much different than what really was needed in the blog post. Zenob asked questions in our last meeting on Monday to clarify and the clarity is listed below, Kristen. So okay. do, you, do you have any other questions you wanted to discuss there, Zina? No, I don't. I sh um, I'll have a draft ready for review um, on or before our next meeting. Right. All right. Excellent, thank you, okay. And access to a Kubernetes cluster. Uh, I've got, um, I'm exploring two paths. Uh, one is a donation from CloudBees. And the other is a donation from Oracle. The Oracle Cloud team is, is discussing Hey, how can they get more involved with Jenkins? And uh, I've, I still don't have an answer. 
Zenob, I think you're okay starting the writing next week without access to a cluster. Is that still okay? Yes, it's it's okay. Okay. The 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 motivation here is I've got we've got we're also mentoring a Jenkins X writer and they really can't start writing until Monday. So I'm pressing hard to get that one solved. And uh, more info at Monday's meeting. I'll let you know what I've learned or okay. by email. Great. All right. Uh, next, structure the documentation of the Kubernetes on Jenkins section. So, Zinab, would you like me to open up the proposal? How? What would you? What would you prefer? Um. Yes, uh, I think okay. that's fine. Let's do that. And if I recall correctly, it was right here at the bottom. Yes. There we go. All right. And structure, yeah, structure is the same. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay. So, and Zinov and I discussed this one on Monday, Kristen. Okay. And one of the daunting things for me was that I am probably the worst possible person to suggest how how to structure documenting Jenkins on Kubernetes because I just don't have the experience. So that was one of the things we were hoping for your your guidance and your coaching and help. Now, Zina, do you mind if I just take a copy of this and put it into okay. our doc and we'll edit it right there so that we don't damage your your original okay. draft? Yeah, that's probably the best way to do it too. And that way we can put comments and things on the page. Right. Well, and then then we don't feel shy about throwing away the, the things that I've ca I, I grabbed during our meeting. Okay, so. Let's put it right up. Okay, so here's our text ready to go. And Zina, okay. I, I, I suspect this is a place where any of us can offer suggestions or ideas. Um, Kristen, if you've got suggestions, Zinab, do you want to guide us through some particular things where you say, oh, I'd like to do this and this? Okay. So um, the first, my thoughts when I was working on this is to have probably the first section like a user guide. So um, starting from the basics, um, what is Kubernetes, how, um, Jenkins and Kubernetes relate or um, Jenkins and Kubernetes, just like an introduction, then um, a guide to installing Jenkins on Kubernetes cluster. Um, I think this is good for the installing Kubernetes cluster. Do we also want to, Helm is good. Do we also want to make sure we include the, the Jenkins operator? Oh, right, right. Yeah, yeah. so Jenkins operator, the Jenkins operator because that's a that's a different way to do the install yeah. that's perfectly valid, right? Right, and it's a good way to do it. And I think there's luckily I think there's um, I just actually watched the video last week, um, like just a getting started um, tech talk that had been done by somebody. I I'll see if I can find it again. I closed it, <laughs> but yeah. So like if they if you want to get started with Jenkins operator, that's like another good way to get started. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll put it in here when I find it again. <laughs> Excellent. Sure. All right, cool. You can keep going. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I actually think this Jenkins on Kubernetes versus Jenkins X shouldn't be at the top. Ah, good. Okay. Well, and maybe it's irrelevant in the sense that they they know they're running Jenkins. We don't gain yeah. much by clarifying it for them. What if we just deleted it and yeah. said, hey, you know you're running Jenkins and we don't it's have to good. specify why. Mm -hmm. Okay.
Now, Zinab, in terms of, yeah. I was assuming there'd be something about administering uh, Jenkins on Kubernetes. And now this is just me thinking, yes. so you're welcome yeah. to discard it, but upgrades, for instance, from one version to another and okay. upgrading plugins uh, and managing plugins. Um, Kristen, I think there might be something worthwhile about tracking job definitions and and um, I'm, what I'm used to having called seed jobs or jo maybe a dif different was, it, or let's just call it job definitions. The other one might be um, uh, system configuration, credentials, um, let's see, uh, what other things? Like if there's anything specific needed for setting up, like additionally running on Kubernetes? Because I, like, I guess the one thing I'm looking for is like, we should try to focus in this section probably on things that are different from managing Oh, quote unquote, oh right. Jenkins. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like, it's, if we start getting into a, like a, an entire guide on how to manage Jenkins, it could get like, it's like a whole right. other Google server of documents. Well, but it's important to highlight the, you're right, like Mark, to highlight the pieces that are like unique or very specific to the local, for example. That's a, that's a very good point. So it's a more of what's different from typical, right? Because right. we certainly don't want in this section to describe configuration as code per se, because that's right. described elsewhere, right? So a yeah, good point. Okay. Yeah. So it's really a system configuration for Kubernetes more than it is, how do I configure system for sort of general purpose? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. As, I mean, we, can, we can include links out to the other stuff too, like the link inside of our documents, other stuff. Right, that's very good. Yeah. Now, and I've watched while the Helm charts go through upgrade processes. So is there something there about deploying a new version? Defining it and deploying it? Yeah. Then Zenob had included scaling Jenkins on Kubernetes, and that one seems like a fascinating topic. Yes, <laughs> that would be really interesting. I can imagine that's something that a lot of people would be interested in seeing, too, even if they know the basics of how to use Kubernetes or Jenkins on Kubernetes. Like that would be a very popular section for more advanced users. Mm -hmm. So. So things like managing performance, right? Managing performance of, of jobs, system. Now, is there any, are there any Kubernetes specific things relative to topics like backup or like um, yeah, those kinds of things where, or is that, oh, use your, your standard techniques? I don't, I don't think so, but okay, for, great. There might be for more advanced people who know more about it than I do, but yeah, I don't, from what I know, no. Okay. Really. Now, now this one, building Docker images is, I thought, quite complicated. So choosing, isn't there a choice between Docker and Docker, Kaneko, um, and other builders, and, and I don't even remember the other builders' names. Actually, yeah, we, should, we should definitely highlight that you should probably choose 
Canico, like as like they like what you probably should highlight because Docker and Docker is yeah, like definitely highlight having that one first. Um, because sometimes Docker Docker is like an anti pattern. Um, oh, even though I think it. even though I think a lot of people do use it. <laughs> well, but, but <laughs> even but I've we, used it as like a <laughs> before is the kind of just because you had to do it, you had to be able to figure it out. But we should focus try, trying to do now like a Canico type solution. Now, and is this is this a place where we ought to should we in this context talk about container registries, or is that outside of out out of the scope? If we're talking about building the Docker container, we probably should mention it minimally. Okay. I think it might tie in a lot more to sometimes to the cloud provider stuff that is talked about like in the next section because oh, depending on right. who you're using like it, yeah it's like definitely you know bring it up but then it's like who depending on whatever cloud provider you're using might end up changing your container registry choices too you know where maybe you're using like I know that AWS has its own um that a hundred percent escapes me right now, but they, you know, they have their own container registry type deal. And, right. And so, so you can call, yeah, I agree. Like talk about the general stuff, but also then there might also be the private container registry that people might choose to use. Zenob, any, any things that we've missed here in this section before we go to cloud, cloud providers? Um, I don't think so. How about we look at cloud providers then? So Jenkins on GKE. Oh, nice. Okay, so those are, I had missed that. Those are hyperlinks to existing locations. Great. So GK. Oh, so if they already, if those those are already guides that have been written, or? I believe so. I think these are links to the uh, the cloud providers, right? So oh, great. here's the cloud provider for that one. I think this one is also this is from Azure. So we got Google, Azure, and those are those are excellent. And then let's see, IBM Cloud. I'm I don't think we found one for AWS. Or, or, but that probably should be in the list somewhere, Jenkins on AWS, because certainly they are a major, a major player. Yeah. Last. But, like if someone decides oh, oh. to try to build AWS and then. Here it is. Here's the, yeah, sorry. Here is the, here's the AWS link. It's just. It's, it's a relatively specific link. It's sort of a very specific solution blog and very detailed. Whereas the others felt to me, at least like they were more general purpose. Now, Zenob, do you have any suggestions there on how you, how you think you'd like to approach this? Do you want to choose them by popularity? Work on the the most most popular first, or or some other some other reasoning. I think the idea would be to arrange it by the most popular. That way, you'd be able to reach out, reach more people. And, and I think so too. So I've I've tentatively put. AWS at the top of the list because I think they're the largest, the largest provider. And then I think Azure is second and Google is third. Now, I don't, don't know what those will mean in terms of your development experience, because certainly you can't can't do you can't do a documentation for EKS the the Amazon experience without us getting you an account 
on in AWS, right? We will have to get you access to those resources. So that, that will need some time to set up. Yeah, we can be, I could be working on the user guide in the meantime, yes. depending on when we're able to. Oh, ah, good point, okay. Well, and, and I, I that also lobbies that I could go go to these suppliers and say, hey, would you be willing to donate? Sure. Because they may say, hey, we're happy to donate funds to help an open source project like this. Great. Okay. Any other notes, Kristen, as you've worked with the cloud providers, any crucial things where you think, oh, be sure we remember this or be sure we cover that? No, but I, I guess the big thing for us is making sure that we do not look like we're favoring any one cloud provider, which I think is easy to do because if we have a list of all of them, then and then if the directions are mostly like, I guess if the initial setup stuff is all like, for example, this is how you set it up in using Minikube or something else, just makes it a little bit more care. Just yeah, just making sure we're not showing favoritism. Right. So I, very I don't good. Really see anything that's jumping out at me right now. Now, now there are many of these cloud providers have a, a container execution service. I think AWS calls theirs Fargate. And Azure, I know we use with CI.Jenkins.io, they call it ACI, Azure Container Instances. Um, is that in scope for this, do you think? Or is that, no, that's, that's too far, af far afield, use the, use the Kubernetes plugin instead? Well, th those are for running specific jobs, right? Not, not I for, so. okay, yeah. So maybe that might be, since that's dealing with running Jenkins and not so much. I can tell like this, I think the goal here was more for having like how to use Jenkins on Kubernetes, right? Right. Okay, so, good. So I'm gonna just take that out. out maybe then I'd and... take it out. I, I don't know, Zidab, is, is that something that you would, thought about covering here, but I thought it was more like, here's a Kubernetes environment, make Jenkins run on it. Right. Yeah. Okay, good. So maybe, taking that out. Yeah. So maybe, maybe we can add some extra stuff like that later if there's time, but I would mostly focus on let's get Jenkins running and then, all right, Great. so now how do we configure, I guess, template maybe that's more like the organizing templates to be able to run jobs but we're not going to tell you how to change to write the jenkins files because maybe that's for it does, it does that make more sense mark i think so yeah okay. so here's how to set up all the basically anything inside of it, getting jenkins to run and maybe like in the manage in the manage section of jenkins so then <laughs> as you as administrator are going to be able to have people be able to create the jobs that they need to and use what's out there. Maybe that's, that's kind of maybe how I saw this, this project is. Right. Good, okay. So anything else on cloud be providers before we go on to demo? Um, nope. I'm good. Now, and Zinab, on this mm -hmm. one, had you envisioned like a, a video or how would you, how would you see the, yes, yeah, so this um, hyperlink actually links to a video I saw on um, setting up Jenkins on Kubernetes. So I was thinking we could highlight that in um, the documentation. But um, since Maki mentioned something about Katakoda, I think mm. this would also be a good um, section to include that if we're going to be working on that. Very good. I like that because 
Katakoda has the benefit, if I've understood what its intent is, that they would actually use a Katakoda resource to start up their experiment, to explore. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that would be really nifty to have in the demo section. Great, okay. Any other things you recommend here, Zinov, in your experience of creating these kind of demos? What, what, things, what things interest people? What things may get them most excited, most enthused? Um, so um, in my experience in writing documentation, I think um, demos should be like, um, be able to take people through simple steps so as not to tire them out. So um, more like setting up Jenkins on Kubernetes, um, anything simple that's not too um, deep or technical or long mm -hmm. rather. So people don't tire out while watching the video or going through the tutorial. And something should be able to um, relate to people at different levels. That's um, beginners, intermediate, experts. So someone who is speaking this documentation for the first time and is really confused as to where to get started. So this um, demo should be able to at least give them an idea or a sense of direction as to where they're going to or how to get started. So um, that's why I put in setting up Jenkins on Kubernetes, but I'm not sure of other topics that we can cover in this section, but I'm sure there are a lot. Very good, okay. And one that, that I've seen with the Jenkins tutorials on Jenkins.io is we really need a high probability of success. Yeah. Users, users that don't succeed in a <laughs> tutorial get to. very grumpy. Yes, you're very right. <laughs> or they grumble and, and the grumbling gets, and, and it, it's, Katakota is, makes it even more attractive that way because they assure the environment works. So we're not exactly. trying to tell someone how to run in an environment that, that is uncontrolled right yeah think of all the times that the grumbling on the jenkins.io site about oh this demo failed oh where were you running it in this bizarre and odd environment oh yeah it, it would oh, fail no. there right <laughs> okay sorry we're not even at jenkins yet <laughs> right exactly. we need to, it's like that jenkins is not going to be the problem <laughs> right. okay Anything else you'd like to discuss with on the, on the demo topic? One thing I'm pretty sure of is as we once we start writing, I'm sure we're going to be able to highlight um, some aspects of the documentation where it would be good to just create a short demo. Mm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah. So prefer brief, multiple brief demos rather yeah. than a single larger demo, single right? large, yes. And I think Katakota lobbies for that as well. I believe they, okay. they talk about an upper bound on time. Say, hey, yeah. your, your, your tutorial shouldn't take more than this amount of time because we lose people after that. Okay. So. Also, Mark, a uh, question. Is there a good um, additional SIG that would be a good place to share the demos and stuff to maybe get some testing or some additional visibility. Actually, actually, that's a good point. There are several. There are there are at least two or three that that would probably be interested in that. Uh, let me let me offer them here as okay. candidates. So there's one is the cloud native SIG. Right. Certainly, that's they'll they'll be intensely interested in Kubernetes. Right, because I know that sometimes, especially 
if we're all, you know, we're all involved, we'll be paying attention, but, you know, we're tested the stuff, we might be more familiar with it, or we're just like, oh, okay, we understand what's, what this is trying to say, versus having another, maybe some other people come in and try it outside and give some additional perspectives that we might have missed. It's always good to ask other Jenkins <laughs> experts, Jenkins well, and well, cloud, uh, cloud experts. For particularly, so cloud native, we get the benefit that there are people there who are likely Google specific or Azure specific right. or AWS specific and can highlight, oh no, that, that's not gonna work as well for you if you use this other technique. So that that's very great. good. So um, multiple cloud providers give us hope there. Then I put platform SIG because we've got representatives from IBM, for instance, right. that periodically attend a platform SIG and talk about their PowerPC platform or oh, their cool. system 390Z platform. So their mainframe platform. And, and if, if Zenob, you wouldn't mind sharing demonstrations at some point during this in those two SIGs, they would be delighted to have you there. Mm -hmm. I would love that also. And then the documentation SIG, this one is, is more about structure and how do we fit it? So interested in the, in structure and how to, yeah, how to make it all work. So absolutely, that would be a, a positive one. DocSig meets monthly uh, near end of each month. Platform SIG meets every two weeks on Thursday. And it's actually not far from a reasonable time for your working days in up. It's, um, I think it's, one or two in one 13 or 14 uh, UTC. Oh, okay. All right. And cloud native, I think the meeting times are still being worked out. Great. Okay. Anything else on demo before we go on to the next topic? I think that's all for me. Okay. So then additional resources. And I think this is good ideas in terms of should some of these be included? And oh, 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 actually, here's a good one. Okay, I missed this. This Quick Labs thing is a Katakota style thing from Google Cloud. Oh, okay. So, so, That's... so this one, I'm going to just borrow this and put it up near the Katakota topic. The Google Quick Labs. Right. That would be really interesting too. Is like a hey, an extra if you're interested in running this on GKE, which some people that might be their explicit use case. That's right, That's right, perfect. and That's and so they, cool. yeah. So okay. provisioned. Oh, I did not even consider. Okay, there's another potential vendor. Pivotal was bought by VMware, weren't they? And, and as such now are part of the VMware suite. So PKS based clusters. Okay. any other things we should do with these additional resources. So Helm Charts, I'm assuming, is covered in the installing and in the administering. So that's a good reference. Jenkins Docker and Docker, the, at least the topic, is covered there. And Kristen, you noted that's, that's frequently an anti-pattern. Right. Yeah. And configuration as code, we, we discussed that one. Then, oh, okay, this is, okay, this is a meet, an online meetup on the getting started. Okay. All right. Oh, Randy.
rancher. Rancher is another one. Okay. And I don't, I don't, un, I, what's that? It's a different type of container, right? Oh, is it? See, I don't, I don't know ranchers, ranchers market space. I, I thought they were a, a, a separate component. So I'd have to learn more about that one. Well, they might be coming at it from the perspective of not using Docker files. Um, because they have their own, I think they have their own way of like defining files. So they, that, that uh, might be why they're trying to do it as like a, hey, instead of using Docker, okay. here's how to use Rancher. I don't know what their market share is. Um, like it, if there's a lot of people out there using Rancher. Great, okay, so so that sounds like since you, you don't know it and I don't know it, right. it it holds as a low, likely low interest for right now. Okay, good. Yeah, but it's good. I mean, it's something to look into too. So just in case. <laughs> so. Okay. And we had already talked on those. Oh, oh, one that hasn't been discussed here that that Zenob and I talked about last week or on Monday was Microsoft Windows and Kubernetes, and I don't oh, wow. see that anywhere here. Does that fit anywhere into this structure or, or no, it needs to wait for another time? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it might be a logical thing to say Windows. No, not really, because I bet they care about Windows on any of the platforms and probably can run it anywhere. Okay, maybe, maybe I should hide it under advanced topics and we leave it till later. Is that a fair thing to do? Kristen, what's your, what's your experience with Kubernetes, Windows and, and Kubernetes? The Jenkins project has wrestled with a little bit, of, with it a little bit, but it's, it's sort of working by using these Azure container instances. Right, I was like, I haven't really had situations where we've had to use Windows on Kubernetes simply because it is such so painful. <laughs> um, so, okay, so I'm just going to list it as is, an advanced topic. Yeah, I think so. And if that's if that's more about like using it, I guess if there's anything that needs to be done inside of or if you would be able to speak to this, like inside of Jenkins in order to tell it to actually, you know, have the right license for Windows and all that other fun stuff. Um, in the, basically the Bannon's Jenkins page, then we should cover it there. But yeah, that does seem pretty. pretty advanced. Yeah, I, I don't know how many people are, I can imagine people would do it only for situations where you need Windows, like a Windows specific product. Like I know some security scanners, like if it only runs with Windows, or if you're doing a certain test of your product and it needs to be able to be deployed. But most of the stuff I think people are using Linux. Right. Yeah. I, if, if I'm deploying a Microsoft.net based website or a right. .NET based web service or a .NET based microservice, then I've got to be on Windows. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> okay. Got it. All right. So we covered the topics that were on my thought thoughts and way beyond, far beyond. Anything else, Zenob, that you would like me to take note of? No, nothing else. And Kristen, any any topics you think we've missed? Um, no, definitely doing the walking through the layout was a was a good thing to do because that can help us get started next. So Great. The next pieces. I think I don't have anything else specific. Okay, then project timeline, Zenob. I'm not sure what to offer in terms of timeline here. Um, what would you suggest? What, what works best for you in terms of planning your projects and what should be done, done first, which should be done second, those kind of things? Um, so, well, for me, um, I think I just like to, if 
like um, from the way we've broken down the topics and all that, since we know what we want to cover, I like to be able to um, determine how many um, sections or which topic to deliver within a week or probably before our next meeting. That way we're able to um, time the whole project and not um, plan for too much or less. So, um, and also know what we are expecting. So say for instance, if we say, okay, installing Jenkins on Kubernetes, probably that will take one week, then the following week work on this. Um, I think that's how I plan um, I, I plan the project. So things don't happen haphazardly and everyone has expectations. Sure. I like that. That sounds great. Um, so map them to to the calendar. Yeah, I like that a lot. Okay. So as far as I can tell, we certainly have flexibility to adjust as we learn more, right? Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, I guess what other question I have, are there any pieces here in this kind of layout or thing that might take some coordination and extra time to accomplish? Like I've, I know that Mark, you're going to talk to some of the cloud providers to, you know, that's something that is out of our immediate control of our team, just from, you know, having to work with external teams. Um, is I'm not sure, like, how, I've never used Catacoda to do any type of, like, you know, I've never, like, launched a thing on Catacoda before. Um, does that require us to, like, submit things way ahead of time, or I don't always sign up for something? I don't know if there's... Yeah, and, and Mark, he yeah. has agreed to give us a tutorial session on Catacoda. Okay. Okay. And so I think getting that scheduled uh, would be uh, very good in order to hit their dependencies. The team member, um, so inside CloudBees, a team member was working with Katakota as well and found it to be quite fluid, quite comfortable. Okay, but it's worth good. us having Marky do the demonstration, talk about it and say, here's what he's learned. Marky has even more recent experience with Katakota than my team member did. So. All right, perfect. Because then it's like a extra barrier. If, like if we had to wait or submit something, it could be like, you know, right. we would like to create like create a course. And I didn't know if it was something where we'd have to wait, and it's and like, submit sooner rather than later, and then work on things in parallel. I'm just I guess I'm trying to go. What can we do in parallel to get so we don't end up in a situation where, um, where you know, of course you have you're blocked or something. Wait, you're like you're just waiting for someone else to get back to you about something. Mm -hmm. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> and, and it's out of the control of, you know, uh, Mark, myself, Oleg, Marky. Great. Good, okay. Any other key points? So it seems like I've got an action. We've got I've got action items to continue on the work. The I'll get the the invitation sent out for the Katakota session um, with Marky out today. He I assume he won't respond for a day or two at least. But hopefully by next Monday we'll we'll have it. If Marky were not available, if his his illness turned longer, I think I could ask this colleague of mine to come give us an overview, or we could invite Katakota themselves to give us an overview. Great. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Any other topics we need to cover today? No, I, th I think everything's okay from, from my side. Zena, yeah. things okay for you? Yes. Okay, great. Then let's call an end. I'm going to stop the recording. I'll post a, a recording and I will put a hyperlink into the notes to the recording in case we need to refer to it later. Thank you, Zena. Have a great evening. Thanks, Kristen. Thank Thanks you. very much. Thanks.
Thank you. Bye. Bye.